We're here with River Source to do some community science. And my name is Rich, and I'm here with Carlos, Tommy, and Ray Lynn. And so what we're hoping to do here today is to show you guys some techniques that you guys can utilize in the riparian habitats near your own home to determine the health of the riparian area. So we're going to start looking at the riparian vegetation structural diversity. And that's looking at the different height classes that provide habitat and homes for wildlife. It provides cover, uh, provides vegetation for animals to eat, and also perching and nesting places for birds. As we're looking at different height classes, one of the easiest way to consider it is how many different heights of plants do you see? Okay, like if you look at me and Rich here, we actually qualify as two different height classes because guess what? He's taller than me and I'm the short guy in the bunch. Looking at the vegetation out here, we can look at everything from the short grasses that are on the bottom, as well as the different riparian vegetation, such as these willows that we see behind us. And if we look in the further background, we can see even some uh, taller trees, such as that Goodings willow over there, as well as some of the cottonwoods. In this particular area on the Santa Fe River, because we have a low height class of the grasses and forbs, and we've also got shrubs, and we also have trees, this would score very well. This would get a score of four from zero to four, four being optimal or excellent. The next thing we're gonna do is Tommy and I are gonna measure the riparian area buffer width. And that measures how wide it is from the edge of the stream to the first major disturbance. In this particular case, we have a major disturbance over there of a dirt road. And then the edge of the stream is right over here. Let me take this end and I'll walk to the edge of the stream. It's 26 feet. That puts it in fair condition. If the road is a little bit further away from the stream, that would be better. Here is a variety of recommended riparian buffer widths. Remember, the wider the area is, the better. The next measurement that we'd like you guys to take is we're trying to get an understanding of how many different types of plants exist within the riparian area. It's what we call the vegetation diversity. Okay. Is that, is that, these are the same thing, yeah, these are the same thing. <laughs> And if it has flowers or leaves, it is great to get those as well. The next step in this activity is to determine how many different types of plants that we have. You don't need to know the actual names of these plants, but we're trying to identify different types of plants. So if the leaves look different or their structure looks different, then we can call it a different type of plant. In our sample that we collected here, I believe that we found about 15 different types of plants. Um, according to the score, 15 would give us a score of good or a suboptimal uh, score as far as the health of the vegetation here. So the more plants that you find, the greater the diversity is within the riparian area. All right, the next measurement that we'd like to share with you guys is to get an understanding of the stability of the banks. What we're actually looking for is erosion where dirt and material is moving away from the banks. So at this location where me and Tommy are standing, on one side of the bank over here, you can see that there's a lot of vegetation. The vegetation works good in order to hold the banks together. On the other bank over here, you can see the presence of erosion, where the dirt and material has started to wash away as the force of the water has eroded this bank. And so what me and Tommy are gonna do is we're gonna walk a small section of this bank here and we're gonna get an understanding of how much erosion do we see. All right, so as we move further upstream, we can see that the bank has actually stabilized. There's a lot of 
great vegetation up here from heavy grass as well as willows on this side to the willows holding the banks together on this side. So as far as the amount of erosion that we see here, it is very limited. There wasn't that much other than where we first started our survey. And so I believe that if we looked at this, that we would be in a suboptimal condition or what we oftentimes consider a score of three. The next measurement that we'd like you guys to look at is to see how much sun is actually hitting the water. The temperature can be impacted by the sun so much that the amount of dissolved oxygen can actually go down if the water gets too hot. So the way that we perform this survey is to merely look up. So well, Tommy, what we're gonna do is look up and let's see what kind of vegetation do we have here. Okay, so we do have some trees of various height classes here, but we need to be aware that we are here during the middle of the day. So the amount of sun that's actually hitting the water is a lot more than we would expect during the early mornings or the afternoon. So these willows, for instance, could provide a lot of shade during the early mornings as the sun is coming up or as the sun is going down in the evenings. So I think if we look at the amount of sun that is actually interacting with the water right now, we do have a measurement of mixed sun and shade. The vegetation that we have around here will help protect the water from temperatures getting too hot as the sun travels across the sky throughout the day. The next measurement that we'd like you guys to look at is to get an understanding of the stream bed geology. What is the size of the material that the geology of the bottom of the stream is made up? And when some of the easiest things that we can look at are how much sand do you have, the smaller particles here, or other things such as gravel, which are the medium particles, bigger than sand, but smaller, than what we call cobbles. Cobbles are normally bigger than a baseball. We are also gonna look for what kind of things such as logs occur within the stream bed. If we find that our stream has a lot of sand and fine particles within it, then it tells us that the stream bed is not healthy. It does not have the same type of habitat that gravels and cobbles will have for things such as invertebrates or fish. If your stream has more than 90% of sand or fine silt material, then that is an indication of poor stream bed geology. So ideally, we are looking for geology that has a lot more gravels, cobbles, and logs. Based off of our quick survey here, we have determined that a lot of the materials here are made up of things such as cobbles. There is a lot of gravel in here and there isn't that much sand material. Much of what you see here are going to be gravel and cobbles. The other thing that you can be looking for is boulders, but we do not have boulders. Those are normally things that are bigger than a basketball. Based on our short survey here, I think that we have a very optimal score here being a score of four because we have more than 50 percent of gravel cobbles and logs that exist within this stream Yeah.
crawdad's now.